Following the signing of the Treaty of Versailles in 1918, ending World War I, the Red Scare emphasized the communist threat creating a need for all-out containment of the problem. The 1920s was a decade of political, social, and scientific changes that greatly affected the United States. Shortly after the stock market crash, devastating the nation and halting almost all advancement, these dramatic changes in the United States during this period created a need for new technologies and betterment of the nation. Thus, one man in particular took into his own hands to spark a scientific revolution. This was the scientific revolution that was made possible thanks to Dr. Robert Hutchings Goddard. And now we'll draw his life by Skylar Hales and Jack Komkowicz. After graduating in 1911 from Clark University and receiving his doctorate in physics, Goddard stayed the next year at Clark to teach physics and carry out rocket experiments. In 1912, Goddard moved to Princeton University but returned home shortly after because he was sick. While he was recovering, he wrote his first rocket patent application. In 1914, two of his patents were accepted. One was for a multi-stage rocket using solid fuel and the other was for a rocket that used liquid fuel. In 1915, he launched his first gunpowder rocket outside the university building. His research was published in 1919 in the exposition, A Method of Reaching Extreme Altitudes which detailed mathematical theories of rocket propulsion and his gunpowder-fueled rocket experiments. It also included a proposal regarding a rocket flight to the moon. This was considered far-fetched nonsense at the time. Many people laughed at this idea, but Goddard stuck to his belief that every vision is a joke until the first man accomplishes it. Once realized, it becomes commonplace. He realized gunpowder rockets were very inefficient in converting energy into motion. Goddard then turned his attention from powdered fueled rockets to liquid fueled ones. His research at the US Navy Bureau helped him to realize that a rocket dependent on atmospheric oxygen could never fly in space. This led him to use liquid oxygen in order to account for the lack of oxygen in space needed for combustion. Goddard also discovered the rate of combustion depends on the amount of oxygen and designed a rocket using a combination of gasoline and liquid oxygen as fuel. On March 16, 1926, he launched his first liquid-fueled rocket. It reached a height of 41 feet and averaged a speed of about 60 miles per hour. In 1930, Goddard moved to Rodwell, New Mexico in order to test rockets full-time. There he launched a rocket that reached an astounding height of 2,000 feet and 500 miles per hour. He then wrote a book containing his research and findings. His work, Liquid Propellant Rocket Development, was published in 1936. In 1940, Goddard explained to U.S. Army and Navy officials about the German threat and the necessity for the United States to produce its own long-range missiles. He uses his research and ideas of liquid fuel to help the U.S. make long-range missiles and other weaponry. Goddard's achievements included being credited with 214 patents, a role in the moon landing, and having the first space flight center named after him, along with many more. Dr. Goddard's invention of the liquid fueled rocket allowed for space travel because it removed the dependence on atmospheric oxygen for combustion and was much more efficient than previous rockets. This ushered in an era of space flight, innovation, and scientific advancement. His research and achievements contributed to the US's victory in the space race and the eventual defeat of communism. He contributed to the advancement of military technologies. His research allowed for the creation of things such as Genesis and Takeoff, 
long-range missiles, handheld rocket launchers, and military air aircrafts. He assisted in the advancement of space exploration as well. Goddard's achievements instilled hope and ambition in the American people. He showed that a better future was on the horizon. He once said, it is difficult to say what is impossible, for a dream of yesterday is the hope of today and the reality of tomorrow.